Hey everyone, Todd Gober with Step by Step Golf coming to you again today with episode six of At the Turn. The title of today's episode is called The Scoring Tent. And I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to introduce our, our guest for today's interview, and then I'll come back at the end with, uh, with a takeaway message for you guys. But the message today is phenomenal, super powerful. I am pleased to introduce a good friend of mine and a friend of the ministry, Nick Robillard, who is a current golfer on the UAB men's golf team. Uh, sit back and enjoy the interview with Nick. All right. Hey there, everyone. Uh, this is Todd Gober with Step by Step Golf. Uh, with the next episode of At The Turn. This is episode six, and I am thrilled to have a good friend, Nick Robillard, joining us today. Uh, I've known Nick since he was a, a little guy, and um, I am super, super honored and thankful to have Nick with us today. Hey, Nick, um, give everybody a little bit of background of kind of what you're doing today and uh, talk about who you're playing for and talk about your golf game a little bit. All right, so my name's Nick Robillard. I, um, I'm a redshirt junior at UAB. I've known Mr. Todd and um, been associated with step-by-step -step golf since I think my sophomore year of high school. Um, got the invite to get my first Memorial Cup at Old Waverly um, and got to know a lot of the guys through that. Um, I um, currently sitting in my girlfriend's house, just got done practicing. Um, and um, getting ready for some upcoming tournaments. We, um, the UAB got to play three events this fall, which was more than what we were thinking was gonna happen at some points during the summer. We weren't sure if we were gonna get to play because of COVID, um, but thankfully we were. And um, I had a breakout semester, which is always fun. And um, won my first college event, which was awesome to break through on. And the team won all three of our tournaments we played, 29-0 um, record currently ranked fifth in the country and um i got a little bit of individual love and currently ranked 13th which i never thought was possible but here we are um i mean if you had told me a year ago that our team would be ranked fifth in the country i'd be 13th and like having a breakout season i would have i would have laughed in your face but here we are well we're, we're going to get to that in just a minute but I, w I want you to talk a little bit more about those successes so tell, tell tell us about the tournament you won this year where was it what'd you shoot tell us a little bit more about that so um the tournament i won was called the jim rivers intercollegiate it was the very first division one men's golf tournament across the whole entire nation um to open up the um, fall season so it was kind of like it was weird because this year or this semester, we had to play with our teammates when we played. So right off the bat, you get there and it's kind of like a curveball. You're like, all right, well, usually it's a lot more like tense. Um, everyone's on edge, kind of feeling first term of the semester. And it, you were playing with your teammates. So it kind of brought a more of like relaxed feel to it, which was cool. Um, but it was also like weird at the same time because you had to like lock in and you're like, okay, this is a tournament. This isn't just like a practice round, like this counts. So um, it was kind of weird, but um, it was fun at the same time. And I've been playing really well leading up to it. Uh, we had qualifying the week before and we had played three rounds right before prior to. And I shot 15 under through three rounds. And um, I bogeyed my last hole all three rounds. So I shot 67, 67, 67 with the bogey on the last, all three rounds. So I knew, like, going into it, I was like, okay, like, I'm playing my best golf ever. Like, I might actually have a chance to finally break through. I mean, I've knocked at the door so many times. So when we got there, I was like, okay, just kind of do what you've been doing. You've got it in you. And, um hit it well in the practice round, then got on the first tee with my teammates, striped the first tee shot, and then just went from there. And um, I shot 67, which the first round, I had a one-shot lead after the first round, but it was kind of a disappointing one-shot lead because I got to six under through 12 holes. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I could really take it deep this tournament, but you're never going to complain with a 67. And then I shot um, 68 the next round, and then the final round um, – was very nerve-wracking to say the least sleeping on a four shot lead is um never fun um i was on facetime with my girlfriend the night before with her mom and they were like man like it's got to be such an awesome feeling sleeping on a four shot lead going into tomorrow and i was like 
no. I was like, I either want to have a 12 shot lead or I want to be tied. I mean, four is like, it was like that middle ground where you're like, you make one double bogey and they make a birdie. And next thing you know, your lead's pretty much gone. And so, um, it was pretty nerve wracking. And my teammate was the one that was tracking me down. So of course you're playing with your teammates and he's the one that's trying to take your first collegiate win from you. So it was, um, it was, it was pretty interesting, but to have my dad there, um, to watch was awesome because he's put just as much into my golf career as I have, um, with sacrificing time and, um, money. And, um, it was just awesome to walk down 18. I, I eventually got my four shot lead back. It got down to one and then I birdied two or two out of the last four holes coming in. Um, so to get my four shot lead back going into 18 um, and just kind of be able to relax and walk down the last hole with my dad walking down the edge of the fairway was, was pretty cool. That's awesome. Well, and your successes even go back earlier in the summer. Um, if I remember right, you finished top five or top four, was it, in the, in the Alabama men's amateur? Yeah, so I finished fourth um, with my dad on the bag. Um, it was kind of like I, I'd, had a, I'd had a decent summer, um, but it wasn't like a – There's a dog, I take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a dog running on this fence. He doesn't like me too much right now. Um, I'm going to have to move here. He's literally looking at me through this fence hole. Um, um, stay down. Yes, yeah, so my dad was on the bag for me. Um, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping he leaves. He's got eye contact on me right now. Big black German shepherds breathing down my neck. Um, but just my dad was on the bag for me. And um, everybody who knows my dad, Mark Ribellard, he's he's a five foot two couldn't hurt a fly goofball and so um I figured having my dad on the bag would kind of bring just a just a positive just kind of goofy energy keep me in check um I hadn't really been playing that well but I was kind of getting my golf game back um and so just having him on my bag I actually got off to an awful start I mean it couldn't have gone any worse I like high on my first tee shot into the water uh, my dad is pushing the bag. He slips and his foot runs into the water. He gets his, his shoes soaking wet on the first hole. Bogey a par five. You're like, great. Like, this couldn't get any worse. But um, just the positive energy um, he brought on the bag just kind of, like, kept my spirits up. And I finished super strong um, the first round and then just rode from there. I shot 14 under for the tournament, finished fourth. Um, and that kind of just catapulted me into this kind of breakout season um and so to have that tournament where things click you realize you do have it in you still and then to have your dad on the back on top of it was I mean it was it was an awesome week so you mentioned being ranked 13th is that it is that an individual national ranking or how does that work yeah so um the way college golf works I mean every tournament has there's a team winner and there's an individual winner um and so as well, along the lines of that, they have team rankings and in individual rankings for college events. I mean, it's got to be strictly an NCAA-sanctioned tournament to count towards your ranking. Um, so the three NCAA-sanctioned tournaments I played this semester, I finished first. I finished first, fourth, and third. So um, it's pretty pretty strong. Um, pretty strong three tournaments so then to have those three tournaments counting towards your ranking I mean like you came in with an empty slate so those it didn't matter how I played how terrible I was playing previous it was like these are the three tournaments that count and here I am sitting gotcha. 13th ranked in the nation okay awesome well um you know, Nick, one of the reasons I thought about having you as, as a guest on this video series is, and you've alluded to it a little bit already, is is the year before was a little bit challenging. And, and you kind of got through some of those challenges to experience the successes you've had this year. Take us back to last year. Talk a little bit about the challenges you went through last year, kind of kind of not only what you were facing, but I think I even heard you say you, you even considered walking away from the game, if I remember right. Yeah, so um, last year was not a fun year. I, um, my sophomore year, um, I played some really great golf. I played every single tournament for UAB. Um, 
it's just an awesome year. And I kind of went into the summer um, pretty confident in my game and just kind of stepped away from practicing some. I worked a bunch. I showed up to tournaments. I played tournaments. Um, but I just was kind of just like losing like my drive and passion for the game. Um, I, I had played – all throughout high school. I mean, golf, you really only have like a month or two months off every year. Otherwise, you're preparing for the next event, preparing for the next event. Um, and it just kind of like built up. I um, mean, I'd put a lot of pressure on myself and there was a lot of like, kind of like built up anger almost. And um, it, it showed, I mean, my head, I wasn't in the right place mentally off the golf course, which then shows on the golf course. Um, and it was just like, everything was haywire and, and specifically like my behavior and my pull in my play on the golf course was kind of like a check engine light like hey something's off here like you've got some stuff you got to deal with before you can even like think about being mentally clear to play 18 holes under like intense pressure um so i came back from summer into school of golf and um still hadn't really dealt with any of the issues that i needed to and Came back, immediately lost my starting job. Um, not that I didn't care, but it just didn't, like, hurt like I felt like it should have. And I talked to my coach, and I was like, I just don't think I'm in the right spot right now. And I was like, school, I just don't have a lot of drive. Golf, I don't have a lot of drive. Um, and golf had been kind of like my identity, like, my whole life. Um, and so to lose that, it kind of threw everything else off. So um, I ended up redshirting which was a blessing because um, I got to kind of step away and um, focus on what needed to be fo fixed off the golf course. And um, it thankfully um, that time away allowed me to do that. So you had a great sophomore season um, and currently you're in your fourth season, uh, which I know you called your red shirt junior um, year. So we're talking about your third year at UAB um, if I remember right, I th you, you mentioned you redshirted, which means you didn't travel, you didn't play in tournaments. You, you probably felt like you were just in this quagmire. I mean, this, this dead end. I mean, you know, almost walking away from the game, if I understand correctly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't even feel like I was part of the team. And my golf game was at, like, the worst it had been ever, and it was just frustrating and I couldn't seem to round any corner to get it to start improving and um I I mean I had no motivation to practice and so I, I ended up I had a meeting um with my swing coach Brian Speakman um who'd been my swing coach since I started playing golf and I mean he could tell he was like um I've noticed just over the past couple of months just mentally like you just seemed off and um, he didn't have the drive that you used to. Um, and so he noticed too. I mean, we had to talk like, he was like, you're one of my longtime students. And he was like, and you're more than just a, a golf student. Like you're a good friend of mine. And he's like, if, if you feel like you don't want to play anymore, he's like, we will still be friends. Like, um, he was still, he would still be a mentor. Um, and it, that week I kind of had some talks to my parents, like, do I, I mean, do I actually want to just hang, hang the sticks up? Because at this rate, I mean, it's just, it's killing me mentally. Um, so yeah, there were definitely some times where I thought about just putting the sticks up and getting a job. Wow. Wow. What were, if you were to give the audience watching this, Nick, if you were to give some tips, and obviously there's some relationship here to life and how, how life feels the same way in, in, a, in a lot of, lot of cases to, to many of us, what would be the two or three tips? Was it, uh, I, I know how much you love the game of golf, uh, and as you and I were talking before uh, this call earlier today, we talked about the love of the game. Um, would you say that just, at the end of the day, you just went back to the fact as to how much you love the game. And was that a part of getting you through kind of a day by day approach? Yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> I love the game of golf. It's taken me more places than I mean, I could ever even have imagined. Um, but I, I think where I went wrong was I mean, I put a lot of pressure on myself and it, it almost 
became like my identity. My, my golf was my identity. Um, I was a golfer off that high school. I was a golfer in college. It was just golf, golf, golf. And I kind of like lost just a perspective on it is a game. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a game that will drive you absolutely mentally insane. Um, and you have to keep it in that perspective. I mean, there's so much more to life than just golf. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing game that I love. But, I mean, if you just golf, 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 and that's all you ever know, you're gonna, no. you're you're gonna you're gonna start to struggle. Wow. So it was just it was just kind of like that perspective of it's a game. It's a game that I love, and it's not. There's no one holding a gun to my head right now saying you've got to shoot 66. I mean, it's just you've got to love it to play well. Well, um, and I know Nick. This is another reason I thought about you for this video series. I know you are also uh, a man of faith. I know you are a uh, uh, committed. Uh, uh, believer in Jesus and uh, and that that is where you place your identities. Talk just a little bit about that as we kind of begin to close out the video here. Um, and you, you you said very clearly you, you realized your identity was not as a golfer, uh, but I'm guessing probably uh, more of a shift towards who you are uh, and who God created you to be. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, for sure. Um, so that that idea of not placing my identity um, in my golf score actually came right at the end of my sophomore um, golf season. So I was playing great golf. So at the time, like it didn't register. Um, I was playing a tournament, a UAB tournament up in North Carolina and um, CGF College Golf Fellowship had a rep at that tournament. Um, Corky was his name. And um, we were just kind of chatting on the putting green and um, just the whole like identity and golf topic came up um, and he just kind of told me, he was like, can you imagine? I mean, how terrible would it be? He goes, at the end of the day, if Jesus is sitting in that scoring tent and you have to hand him your scorecard every day and that is your identity. He's like, you shoot 76. I mean, he's like, I mean, I mean, that would just be terrible. He's like, I mean, your golf score does not define you. He's like, Jesus died on the cross for you. Your identity, I mean, has already been, claim for you um you don't have to go shoot 66 for that to be your identity he's like golf i mean golf is the farthest thing from your identity it's just something that you love and that you do wow there's so much in that um that, that we'll unpack as part of this video so that is a that is an amazing amazing message and so today as you uh as you tee it up every day either for practice or for tournaments i would say there's probably a freedom or a relief which had to have contributed to your success this year, I would think. Yeah, for sure. And I kind of, I kind of joke that um, uh, COVID and fishing saved my golf game because um, I mean, COVID hit last year when we were um, just beginning our spring season, um, and that was when, probably about a month and a half before that, was when I kind of made the decision. Okay, I'm not going to walk away. I'm going to stick with it. I love golf. Um, and so then a month and a half later, COVID hits. And so then they shut all the golf courses down. It's like you physically can't even go to the golf course. Um, and so I picked up fishing and it just kind of like stepping away from the game um, and just being outside and just kind of like allowing like my mind to just kind of decompress um, really kind of gave me the perspective um, that I needed. Wow. So amazing. Amazing. Well, the quality of your golf obviously has benefited from that freedom. There's no doubt about it. Coming to that realization um, uh, provides that incredible freedom. And therefore, you know, I'm sure it's translated into your enjoyment of the game and your success on the golf course. That's that's an amazing story just to, for that have just have been last year and now to see the successes uh, this year. Uh, man, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you sharing that with our audience here. Um, also, your participation and your support with Step by Step Golf and Memorial Cup all these years, that means a lot to me. Uh, you know how much I love you and your family, man. I appreciate you guys. And uh, your message today, I know, um, is a strong message to to anyone that, that has a chance to, uh, to watch this. So I just want to tell you, I love you, man, and I appreciate you very much. Thanks, Todd. Love you. All right, buddy. We'll talk again soon. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed that message from Nick. Uh, I thought it was incredibly powerful, and especially the part where he talked about um, the scoring tent 
and he talked about his identity in golf. Let's recap that just for a moment. You know, in golf, the scoring tent is a, is a scary place. It's a place of anxiety because we had to track our score for every hole on the scorecard. We have to walk in, we have to present it. It's kind of like showing our performance to the entire world. We have to get it just right. Uh, and then our performance stacks up against everyone else in the tournament. It is a lot of pressure. And Nick mentioned in his golf game, uh, his game, the quality of his game specifically got better when he realized his identity was not in that performance. It wasn't even in the game of golf. Once he got over that, he was able to relax and he just played the game that he loved. And rather than having the pressure of having to walk into that performance-based scoring tent, he just simply went and played the game that he loved. That lesson has a carryover to life. You know, God is not tracking a scorecard on each one of us. Sure, there are things we will have to answer for, um, and, and that's for another lesson at another time. But I don't want you to feel the pressure of every single day as if God is looking over you tracking a score for every single day. In fact, let me share with you what C.S. Lewis says. He says, God doesn't want something from us. He simply wants us. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Guys, we cannot function every day as if we have to fill out a scorecard at the end of the day and then walk into a scoring tent to present. That is not how God wants us to work. He just wants us to love him. So take a lesson from Nick Robillard's message today. Uh, whereas he was feeling the pressure a year ago of having to walk in with that performance-based scorecard and all the anxiety that created and where he shifted to simply just loving the game and not putting his identity in the game. And that love of the game has been the, the key to getting him over that hurdle and to now being the 13th ranked player in the entire nation. I hope you'll think of that same thing and how it relates to your life, not having the pressure of performance every day even if there are things in your life that you're ashamed of or that you've kind of hidden or that you kind of think are separating you from God, guys, do not let that continue to create anxiety in your life. Find a friend, a neighbor, a mentor, reach out to us at Step by Step Golf if you wish. Let us help love on you. Let us help talk with you. Uh, and just remember, God is not tracking a scorecard of all the things we do right and wrong. That is too much pressure, and that would put our identity in trying to be perfect. Guess what? Jesus has already done it all. He has done the performance. He went to the cross, and that should be freedom for us to simply wake up in the morning and just go love God that day. If we can help you with that, uh, let us know. If we can pray with you, let us know. We want, the, uh, the, we want this message to be a message that helps you take a deep breath and go, Whew, I really felt like I was having to perform for God every day. And wow, that is, a, that is a burden lifted off of me that I don't have to think of life that way. I hope that message helps you today, just like it did with Nick and his golf game. If it does, let us know. If you need help with that, uh, again, reach out to us. Reach out to a friend that can help you continue to process that message. Our relationship with God is not a performance-based relationship. Jesus did it all. We just simply wake up and go love him and get to know him more and more each day. Hope that's encouraging, guys. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving week this week coming up and look forward to seeing you again on the next version of At The Turn.